I got asked in a comment on a video earlier um, why anybody should actually buy gas masks because surely the government will give you gas masks if there's any kind of threat and I tried to explain to the person you know in a reasonable way why that's not actually a good idea to have a mentality like that but um, what I thought would be a good idea is actually to do a video on exactly why you shouldn't wait for the government to issue you a gas mask and you should actually get one. Now I've done plenty of other videos explaining good reasons to have a gas mask but what I thought I'd do in this video is explain more about why I disagree with the mentality of trusting the government to do everything for you and also you know examples of gas masks being handed out to civilians. So. I think most people get the mentality that a government will issue you with a gas mask because during World War II most nations produced gas masks for their civilian populations. Russia made a mask called the GP2, Britain had various civilian respirators, America had various civilian respirators, Germany had masks such as the Volk masks, Volk gas masks, such as the VM37, VM38, VM40. Finland had civil defence gas masks. So most nations in World War II actually made gas masks for their civilian population. So I think a lot of people that look at the history, look at World War II and say, well, everybody was issued a mask for World War II, surely we'd be all right. Well, I think people are forgetting how big World War II was and sort of the huge scale of the war. And it, of course, just followed World War I where chlorine gas and other chemical weapons were used on a large scale. So everybody thought civilian soft targets would be a use against gas. Gas attacks, apart from used by Japan against China, didn't really happen in World War II, simply because of mutually assured destruction. For example, Germany had nerve gas, nerve gas being the most dangerous chemical weapon on the plan planet at that point. However, Germany didn't know that everybody else didn't have nerve gas, so Germany was worried if they used the nerve gas, then other countries would retaliate with nerve gas and wipe them out. So nerve gas wasn't used, chemical weapons apart from in East Asia weren't used, but everybody really had a gas mask. When you get into the Cold War, despite the fact that all those threats were still there, most governments did not bother making gas masks for their civilians. Now, here's a really interesting one. This is my C7 respirator, British C7 respirator. Quite a rare gas mask. If you've got one, uh, you find it in your attic and you choose to sell it, you can probably get over £100 for one of these. Um, you can sometimes find them a lot cheaper on eBay, but the C7 was, and hopefully you can actually see, it says C7 on it somewhere, maybe. Maybe not, but regardless, you can see some of the stamps on the rubber there. The C7 was a respirator made by Britain in the 1950s. The idea was to make another respirator to hand out your entire civil population. What actually ended up happening was Britain weighed up the cost of making them, realised that civilians were all going to probably die in a nuclear war anyway and there was no point making masks for people who were going to die. That You weren't valuable enough to get a mask basically, they could spend their money elsewhere. So the C7 was canned, uh, they actually recycled a lot of these or destroyed them. There's lots of theories that follow the urban legend of all of these sort of things, like they put them on a boat and sunk them somewhere, they buried them all somewhere. Most likely they took them in, took parts out of them they could reuse, other bits were destroyed. But C7s were recalled. The only ones that are surviving are where people didn't send them back to be recalled, found them later in their attic and have now sold them on. So here's my C7. But regardless of the fact, civilian life was considered to be too cheap in the Cold War. Most nations took the same thing as Britain. They either didn't produce the mask or produced very little. The idea being important civil servants could just be given military masks that they had laying around. Normal civilians could die. That was their expectation. In a total nuclear war, everyone's going to die anyway, why make them a mask? Um, so there's a bit of an exception to that. One of the only countries, funnily enough, despite how much I hate communism, that made um, civil defence masks for all their people was the Soviet Union. Here we have the famous GP5. GP4s were made before the GP5 after the end of World War II. GP5s are the ones that ended up having over 100 million units built. They made children's masks such as the PDF and PDFD for all the sort of young children who couldn't have this mask. They also had masks for hospital patients, which looked a bit different, and everybody in military service had a variety of different masks. So, if you are in the Soviet Union, you would have actually had a gas mask, even if it wasn't directly issued to you, waiting in storage for you in the event of something. But, like I said, the masks physically existed. The Soviet Union, as I said, despite hating communist countries for all the human rights abuses they did, 
um, did make gas masks for entire civilian populations. In other countries, for example Hungary, there was a mask called the M76, which was issued to lots and lots of people, or was prepared to be issued to lots of people. So at least in the communist countries they did mass produce the masks. However, everybody else wasn't so lucky. If there was a nuclear war, you were dead. Um, another exception is Israel. Because Israel is likely to be the target of terrorism, it often is the target of terrorism, the idea of producing gas masks for entire civilian populations was, you know, a really good idea. So Israel is, I think, modernising to a new mask now, but this is the 4A1, the quite famous one. You see lots of people with these, they get sold as surplus a lot. 4A1s are very good masks. You know, they're not really good masks in a sense. The rubber's good enough, the lenses are good enough, but you can tell it's been made cheaply, but that's the point. You make a mask for a civilian, then they've at least got a mask, and you've not spent too much, I guess, if they don't make it. But... This is a good mask, I've said this before, for people thinking of buying a surplus mask. It's made in a one-size-fits-all configuration for adults. So, mid-teens to any size sort of head with an adult should be able to fit wearing it. An interesting note about this mask is it was the mask, as far as I'm aware, the Branch Davidians used during the Waco standoff, when they were being gassed to death by the US government. They actually used this mask, and a lot of them that did survive were the ones that had these masks. So, the masks work, we know that, but... You know, that's it. So, it's one as a price factor. A government isn't necessarily going to give you a mask because they don't think your life is worth it. Now, I've been talking to some people about this, and a lot of you know I have this book. It's the War Emergency Guidebook. That, whether or not I should have this is another question. This one is a Wiltshire County Council one. And it's basically a booklet that has all the official propaganda about, um, you know, surviving being nuked. And then the booklet goes into detail about how low your survival odds are and how the government is basically going to declare martial law and enslave people once the bombs are dropped. So if you are unlucky enough to be, you know, attacked during one of these conflicts, your odds aren't all that good, I'm afraid, because if you survive the bombs, you're most likely going to be in some sort of slave labour job once the civil servants and the soldiers um, put their guns to you and say, you're working on a collective farm now, you're working, you know, wherever. So your odds as a civilian aren't good. Like I said, I have official documentation to say that was government policy. A few people have mentioned Fred's. Yes, I have seen Fred's. But Fred's was a film made in 1984 that's incredibly like a depressing look at the reality of nuclear war. There's another film a bit like it called The Day After. But Fred's is the one where it focuses on after the bombs dropped, how a sort of country would be governed with martial law and everything else. You know, and sort of maybe you were lucky if you died in a nuclear exchange rather than actually surviving in an irradiated hellhole where you were likely to be shot in the back by one of the government troopers. So there's that. Another issue a government might not issue you gas masks is if you think of civil disobedience and everything like that, if the government wants to retain power, quite often tear gas, CS gas is used against civilian populations. Funnily enough, CS gas can't be used by armies against each other because it's considered a chemical weapon, but against civilians it's fine. Now, CS gas isn't actually a gas, I've talked about this before, it's sort of a powder, it's an incredibly nasty irritant, burns your eyes, burns the lining of your throat, makes you feel sick, wanting to vomit. It's a bit like being pepper sprayed, but it's in, although it's a gas, it's a particulate, although it can be mixed with methylene chloride, things like that, to become a vapour. Uh, CS gas is really nasty stuff, as I was mentioning before about Waco. Lots of the children and women would probably gas to death by the CS gas. If it burns, it produces hydrogen cyanide. It's really nasty stuff. So you want a gas mask against that. However, if a government is deciding that they're doing some sort of, you know, riot control in your area, a government wouldn't want you to have gas masks because that gives you a preventative measure against the gas working that their police are using against you. So, again, you're not going to be issued a gas mask in an area where you might be thought to be, you know, a threat. Even if you're not directly the person rioting, if you're unlucky enough to be in a built-up area, uh, there's rioting going on, and the government troops are firing CS gas everywhere, like they are in Venezuela at the moment, wherever else, you're not in a good situation, are you? Because you might be holed up in your house, the police aren't coming into the area to, area to actually you know, protect you, so you might be killed by a looter or a rioter, and at the same time you're choking on all the CS gas they're spraying everywhere to try and get people off the streets. So, again... You're not going to be issued a gas mask for that possibility. So, 
here we go with masks. So to sum it up, you shouldn't wait for the government to give you a mask. And another thing I didn't mention is if some sort of terrorist attack happens with a dirty bomb and something like that, by that point it's too late. If you don't have your mask on you at the time of a chemical weapon going off, it's not going to do you a lot of good if it's been sat in storage somewhere and the government hasn't issued them yet. So as I was saying, other than Israel, there isn't really anywhere where you actually have a gas mask to hand in case of an emergency. So, let's summarise. You either don't have your gas mask to begin with because it's not been handed to you, the government's thought your life is too cheap and not worth issuing a gas mask to, or the government won't want to give you a gas mask because it likes the idea that they could use CS gas agents on a civilian population to keep them in line. As I've said, I've got the book here, this, well not really a book, but you know, a big folder on British government policy, Oop, nearly dropping the leaflet out, big government on British government policy that they issue to councils in the event of martial law nuclear exchange. I know what they'd sort of do to you, the policies probably haven't changed that much even since the Cold War's ended. We know what they did in Waco in 1993, um, so yeah. The government won't want to issue you a gas mask because it wants to primarily keep control and your life isn't worth it. Even if you, you know, are a taxpayer, you voted the government into power, they're not going to reward you <laughs> for your vote. So there you go, why should you not wait for a government to issue you a gas mask? Because most of them probably won't.